response time. When we're dealing with pressure, how could response time be an issue? When I say response time, how fast that pressure or how fast that gauge reads that pressure? I mean, you would think it would be instantaneous, right? Mm -hmm. What happens to a gauge? I have this gauge and it's sitting on a pipe and over here I have a ball back. And let's say this gauge happens to be 400 psi and behind that pipe I got 200 psi, well within the tolerance of the gauge. So the operator goes over, takes the ball valve and whips it open. What happens to this gauge? It's going to spike. Yeah, it, it's like, no I won't do it through. <laughs> it's like me going like this. That's what it's like. It's called hammer. And that's what happens. The guy opens the ball valve and one failed swoop, 200 psi come up and hit the board onto it. It's not a gradual knife, up we go. It smacks it. He calls you up and says, hey man, the gauge is off zero. It's reading 10 psi and we never overpressured it. My system can't produce that much pressure. And he answered you right. He didn't overpressure it, but he hammered the gauge because he took it like a car hitting a wall at 200 psi. That's what he did. So what do you do? Well, you got to slow down the response time for the gears in the boron tube. Now, how you do that is several ways. One, a lot of our gauges come with what we call an orifice restrictor in. So what that means is there's a little screw that's either pressed in or screwed in to the opening in the socket. And it may only be 30 thousandths or less in diameter. So now, the process comes in, it hits that, it can't jump up into the boron tube, it bleeds through the small opening, it slows it down and you see the gauge go up in a controlled way. That's one. The other is, and we'll talk about these, you also can pull what we call a filter snubber on the bottom. They screw that on the gauge. Depending what the process is, it'll have a different size opening. Again, process comes in, hits it, and then it goes up in a slow, controlled manner so it doesn't knock it out of calibration. So when you get people that call, and the reason we share these thoughts is they say, hey, my gauge is knocked out of calibration, this and that, and we never overpressured the gauge. And we would get it back and look at it. We would not see a blown board on tube, a stretched board on tube. What we would see is it looks like a tooth jumped. It looked like it jumped a gear. Well, that's what happened because it got hammered. So response.